So my last slide today will be called spectral analysis of two times two matrices. So here's my matrix, general look of a matrix with the entries A, B, C, D. Uh, if I compute the characteristic polynomial for such a matrix, which is this one, that will be the determinant of the matrix like so, right? I subtract lambda identity from, from the matrix. Here's my determinant. It's very easy to determine determinant to compute. Here's my computation. A take lambda times D take lambda across here. And BC, as a product across here, if you do the expansion of these factors, you will end up with the characteristic polynomial like so. Now, here's my shortcuts. This number, this number, A plus D, this is the sum of the elements on the diagonal, isn't it? That's the number, that's the, that's the concept, I mean, that's the, this sum, I had a special name for it. A few times I mentioned it, I called it trace of a matrix. Sum of the elements on the diagonal is a trace of a matrix. Now, this term, which is a free term, which doesn't carry any lambda, what is it? That's the determinant of A, right? It's AD take BC. That's the determinant of my original matrix. So here it is. So my characteristic polynomial in case of two times two matrix, it takes this form. It's the unital polynomial, highest coefficient one. Coefficient next to the lambda is simple trace, so it's a sum of the elements on the diagonal. Free coefficient is the determinant of the matrix. So in, if you need to find the characteristic polynomial of two times two matrix, you don't have to go this way. You can just use these two shortcuts and reproduce the polynomial. Moreover, moreover, for the polynomial of degree two, we have what I called once Vieta's theorem. <coughs> what does it say, Vieta's theorem? It says that square polyno quadratic polynomial, unit of quadratic polynomial, is such that the roots of this polynomial, which we know now it's eigenvalues, roots of these polynomials, they add up to the coefficient next to the lambda with the opposite sign. And the product of the roots, which again the eigenvalues, it's they equal to free coefficient. So in fact, we can write these two identities straight away by looking at the matrix, by computing trace and determinant, and we can start guessing the eigenvalues. Here's my shortcut in case of two times two matrices. On many occasions, if you use this shortcut, you will be able to guess the eigenvalues straight from the look of a matrix. Here's the example. It's from the tutorial book, question seven, part C. Here's a matrix. Trace of this matrix is negative three, sum of the elements in the diagonal. Determinant of this matrix is negative 18, take zero. negative 18. My eigenvalues, some of them should be trace, and the product should be negative 18. Easy guess, isn't it? Can you guess two numbers such that in when, they, when you add them, they give you negative 3, and when you multiply them, they give you negative 18? Here's my guess. Negative 6 and 3. And now I can finish my spectral analysis. For the first value, negative 6, is a matrix A plus 6 identities. Here's a matrix. It's 9500. Zero, zero. And the associated eigenvector will be the vector which vanishes such a matrix. We can guess that, that vector straight away. Oh, sorry. Here's the guess for the vector. Negative 5, 9. And so the associated eigen subspace is a span of this negative 5, 9. And the second value, lambda 3, is a matrix A take 3 identity. Again, we can easy guess, easily guess the vector which vanishes such a vector, whereas the vector itself is not 0. It's the first standard basis vector. So the first standard basis vector will be the second eigenvector. And the second eigen subspace is a span of the first standard basis vector. You see, spec complete spectral analysis of 2 times 2 metrics in this case, done 
a lot shorter than the one I just presented on, sm on my previous slide, where we dealt with the three times three matrix, and we didn't have any shortcuts in when we needed to find the eigenvalues. Any questions?